The foreign exchange market or forex market is just like any other market where there is a product which is being bought and sold. And just like any other product, if the price of that product is really high, people won't want to purchase it and there'll be a low demand for it. As the price of that commodity falls, people will demand more of it. So we have a downward sloping demand curve for currency, just like we do for anything else. And at the same time, when the price is high, people will want to supply more of that product. And when the price is low, people will be less inclined to supply that product. And so we have an upward sloping supply curve for a currency. In the market for this particular currency, we've got a supply and demand leading to an equilibrium of P1 and Q1. In this video, we're going to look at what causes the exchange rate to appreciate or go up in value or depreciate, go down in value. And just like for anything else, it's got to do with the interaction of supply and demand. We'll start with the demand factors. When people want to buy something in a particular country, they need to use the currency of that country. And so they will go to the foreign exchange market and demand the currency of that country, which they will pay for with their own currency. If there is an increase in the demand for that currency, we'll have a shift in the demand curve from D to D1, and that will lead to a new equilibrium. So in this example, there's been an, an increase in demand from D to D1, and that's led to an appreciation of the currency. The exchange rate has increased from P1 to P2. To think of the factors which may have caused this demand, we should think about who would want to get the currency of that, of that particular country. And that would be people who are wanting to purchase things in that country. So some examples are people who want to buy that country's exports. So people overseas who want to buy the products of that country, they'll need to convert their own currency into this country's currency. They'll have to demand it in the foreign exchange market. People who want to invest in that country will also need currency. So they will also demand the currency of that country in the foreign exchange market. And another example is tourists. People who are going to that country to visit will want to demand that country's currency in order to spend it at, uh, when they arrive. If over a period of time the, the demand for these things falls, so if that country uh, becomes less attractive for people to want to spend their money there, we'll have a decrease in demand and that will lead to a depreciation in the currency. So demand moves from D to D2 and the currency depreciates from P1 to P2. And this could be because there's less people buying exports of this country, there's less people from overseas investing in the country, or there's less tourists travelling to the country. The supply of this currency on the foreign exchange market comes from people within that country who are supplying their currency, usually to exchange it for the currency of another country. So, for example, if the people in this country wanted to buy imports, goods from overseas, they'd need to convert their currency into the overseas currency. And they would do that by supplying their currency onto the foreign exchange market. And this would lead to an increase in the supply uh, of that particular currency. So the supply would increase from S to S1. We would have a shift in the supply curve, a movement to the right, and the increase in supply will lead to a depreciation in the currency. In addition to buying imports, this could be people in this country wanting to invest their money overseas and needed to convert their dollars, or if they are tourists travelling out of this country into another country and supplying their own currency in order to exchange it for another currency. Supply could also decrease. We could have movement in the supply curve from S to S1, and then we'll have a new equilibrium uh, exchange rate, which means there's an appreciation in the value of that currency from P1 to P2. There are therefore a lot of underlying factors which affect the currency uh, value of a country, its exchange rate. 
So because the amount of exports being sold and the amount of imports being sold has an effect on the level of supply and demand, then this country's terms of trade, uh, the attractiveness of the, the price of their products compared to overseas, they will have an influence. For the amount of investment coming into this country, the relative exchange rate, if the exchange rate is higher in this country than in others, more people will want to invest into this country. Also, if they think that the, uh, the economic outlook of this country is positive and they feel that by investing in this country they will get a, a return on their investment, then people will demand this country's currency. And finally, something like a, a tourism campaign to bring more tourists into the country, that could also lead to an increase in the demand for the currency and that could lead to an appreciation of the, of the exchange rate. Supply is affected in the same way, so the relative price of overseas goods compared to domestic goods uh, could lead to an increase in the supply of the dollars on the exchange rate. If the interest rates overseas are more attractive, then there'll be an increase in the demand for currency in order to invest it overseas. Or if uh, a lot of people in this particular country decide to go overseas for tourist reasons, then there'll also be an increase in the supply of that currency.